you're out of storage. The stream stream will not be stored. All right. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome How's it to going, another guys? episode. What are we on? Number 20 now of our uh, uh, live series on Wednesdays. So I hope everybody's having a good evening tonight. We see Tazzy and Joe in here, Sin Mermaid. Danny's in here. Brian, good to see you, Brian. Amanda. Robin. Proud Monkey. I see he's already spreading misinformation in here. Yes. Yeah. He absolutely Perfect. always does. Wife's in here. She'll be talking about sparklies Jody. throughout the show, distracting everybody from what we're saying. And Michelle. So good to see everybody. Mike. Susan. Hey, Susan. Good to see Mike you here. B and little Joe. All right. Cool. Well, uh, welcome back, Brantley. How you doing? Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Doing good. Glad, glad to be awesome. back. Took, you know, took a little break and ready to get back into the live shows. So it's been awesome. good. Well, good to see you, and I hope we have a fun show tonight. Uh, if you guys have any uh, questions, we have a couple, maybe one news article that we want to kind of spark conversation with today. Um, but uh, if you have any questions for us, go ahead and start putting them in, and we'll star them, and then we'll start to answer throughout the uh, the show today. So if you have any questions for Dave or I or even Brantley, just let us know, and uh, we Pop will definitely uh, star those and uh, try to get to as many questions as we can tonight. We ran out of time last week. So that's why we always recommend getting here early so that you can get those questions in because we do take them generally from the top to the bottom unless it's some kind of topical related question that we're talking about currently. So, oh, hey, JJ Slotplay is here also. Good to see you, Jenny. JJ Slotplay. All right. Joe and Jenny. All right. Let's, uh, let's, do the, um, let's do the story. Let's start with that. Here we Dave. go. Yeah, I'm excited for that one. Bringing it up here. Bring up the right window. Time is money. There Let's we go. go. There, we go. <laughs> there we go. So what's going on is basically every large player in the online sports book betting, uh, you know, FanDuel, DraftKings, BetMGM, Penn, Fanatics. I mean, everybody who's in the scene really has all committed to forming a problem gambling uh, task force, essentially an association. They all put in multiple millions for a total of 20 million. And this will be the first time ever that companies will share information. They are sharing information about problem gamblers. So if you get blocked from DraftKings for problem gambling, and it was Brantley was, Brantley was mentioning this uh, actually earlier that FanDuel, uh, if you are on there for too much or betting too much, they'd block you out for how long did you say, Brantley, like a day? Yeah, it's it's a really interesting feature. And this is one of those things. Obviously, you know, we we don't like to endorse online gambling, of course. But if you are going to do online gambling, FanDuel, DraftKings, places like that are definitely the best. And one thing that FanDuel does that is really cool is if you're playing for too long or anything like that, or even if you're just playing in general, a message will pop up on the screen and it will actually tell you how much money you've spent. It'll bring a message up and it'll say, hey, you have spent a thousand dollars so far. Do you want to take a break? And it actually does give you the option to like take a break and lock yourself out. And I think that's a really cool feature. Like that. Um, I'm really excited yeah. about that. And I, I think that's that's a big step in the right direction for online casinos. And the fact that they're joining together to you know implement some kind of a universal you know strategy against problem gambling i think is something that's really really cool um yeah. and that's that's also why you know again it's you know these these online companies that are legit you know they do care um you know and this is that message that pops up that's something that fanduel has always done um but this is another reason why i say if you're going to gamble online you want to make sure that you're doing it through a legit place like one of these folks that are actually doing this together so i think it's a great thing it def definitely is like it's a step in the right direction where all of these instead of competing with each other and essentially saying oh yeah come over here gamble the rest of your money with us gamble the last bit of your savings with us they're like well let's do it a different way and it kind of goes along with what we kind of teach here is that being a happy gambler within your budget makes you a longer gambler and you're a better right. customer for it and this is it this is making sure you have customers for the next generation and you're not trying to bleed everybody dry and everything else. And it's the Responsible Online Gaming Association, Roga. 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 Nice. I don't know how they came up Sounds with like Roga. a hairspray. Yeah. Roga for men. And it's really important. It's really important <laughs> to mention too. 
Yeah. It's really important to mention too that this is just for the legitimate online casinos because yeah. again, there's thousands of websites out there that are claiming to be online casinos and they're not legitimate. So this is only for the legitimate ones that are here in the United States. So yeah. uh, definitely one, if you are going to play online, I'd recommend only choosing somebody that is a part of this, you know, when making your selection and avoid all of those others out there that just claim to be online casinos, but they're really not. Because those those are very problematic, and then you really get uh, you know you know for sure you have a compliant company that is in the U.S. Um, one of the other things that was on this I thought was really neat was this year a record number of Americans bet on the Super Bowl. Online transactions totaled nearly fifteen thousand per second, doubling wow. last year's peak. Fifteen thousand a <laughs> second. That is incredible to me. Like, yeah, I knew on gambling, online gambling was popular. Sports book betting, all that stuff was super popular. And it's been really kind of a dam that's been waiting to break for a long time in the US. But 15,000 a second. That's insane. Just incredible. Yeah, I I mean, this is a trend too. It's like this is what gets me really nervous. And I know all three of us agree on this, is Guys, it's already bad enough in the physical casinos where people lose control over their betting and spending habits. Mm -hmm. But when you can do it from your phone or do it from your laptop while you're at work or whatever the case is, and you're just, to me, it's like if you do have a problem with controlling yourself, it's going to be 10 times worse when you can do it online or on your phone. It, that's my personal opinion. But it's like, that's why even if we did have an online casino here, uh, available to us in Texas, not a sweepstakes, but a legitimate like FanDuel or MGM or something, I would not even sign up because I know yeah. that it'd probably be a slippery slope for me. And I, I could not control myself if it's that easy. Like I like having right. that distance between me and the casino. And this is tightening up that distance and making it super easy for people to just, just bet and bet and bet and bet. And I just, I just want to throw caution out there. And I know we are all three on board with this for sure. Um, I mean, maybe Dave's not, but I am <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> now we, we want to protect you guys from stuff like this. And so if you are going to do online gambling, uh, number one, always do it with a licensed one. And we'll, maybe we'll get into Absolutely. social casinos. A a U.S. based licensed show, one. Yeah. 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 Stay um, away from social casinos, guys. Yeah, They're not real cool. casinos. Stay away yeah. from them. We will get into that. I'm sure <laughs> during this episode. Um, to but me, yeah, I mean, to me also be, online be gambling. Over. It, it loses something. It loses the the, the yeah. atmosphere, the feel, the, you know, yeah. I'm not in the casino. I don't have the, the mechanical reels are the big thing for me. And you just, you don't get that at all. Now I do like playing, you know, all the different MGMs, uh, slots, the, my Vegas slots, all those, I love playing all those, but at the same time, that's not like, I just, I don't spend money there to play. It's just sort of, you know, you're waiting at work for something to happen. So you play a few times, you're, you know, all these kind of things you're at the airport waiting for your plane. That to me is what those casino games are great for. But the fact that you people spend money that people spend money on this and a lot of money too. It's like, what, what are you getting in for enjoyment wise? To me, it seems like the enjoyment is much less than it would be if you're physically at a casino. I think I think it just yeah. it wipes out the entertainment value completely. It's all about money making at that point. It's like trading on the stock market or something. I mean, it's like we're always preaching on this channel. I know Bradley does the same thing. It's got to be about entertainment. Like you have to go right. to a casino for entertainment. If you're going to try to make money so you can pay rent or do anything like that, you are not doing it for entertainment. You're doing it to try to make money in a very short and risky way. And to me, maybe there is some entertainment value on online slots and online casinos. But for me, it's like, this is just personally speaking. For me, I would just be more of just trying to flip my money as quickly as possible. So I could then go to a physical casino and play, you know, right. Right, the entertainment value. So I don't know. Like, and you guys seem to agree. Uh, let us know in the comments, uh, guys, what you think about online casinos. We're talking about licensed ones now. We may get into social ones later, but. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. It seems like the majority of you guys like to go to the brick and mortar. And I like to see that because I think that's what it should all be about um, because it's more of an entertainment thing. 
We do have a $10 super chat here from Anthony Scroggins. Thank you so much. Hello, Thank you, Reese. You discovered Cowboy Slots and Gamble Smart, and y'all have made me a much smarter and responsible gambler. Thank you. That is great to hear. That's great to hear. That's what we really is. That's exactly what we're here for. And, you know, like we've always said, um, you know, Mark said this, Dave has said this. If you're a smarter gambler, you're going to have more fun. You're going to have more positive experiences at the casino. It's going to make you not just a better player, but it's going to make you like kind of step back and enjoy your time more. Think about what you're doing. And yeah, you're, are you still going to have losing days? Of course you are. It's gambling, but it's not going to sting as much. You know, you're going right. to not leave feeling, you know, destitute and bad and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what we're here for. And I, I wish more people would jump on board with it because once you do understand, um, and by the way, great short today. Uh, Mark, I love it. Oh, yeah. great, great video Where is today. the hat? Great tip today. Um, the hat? Oh, it's over yeah. here. You know, that's that's what it's all about. You know, is if you're yeah. if you're a smarter gambler, uh, you're going to have more fun. You're going to have more positive experiences, and you know, you're going to lessen your losses. You're not going to eliminate your losses, but you're going to lessen them. So, yeah, thank you very right. much for that, Anthony. Yeah, and you know, another right. aspect is you're at home. You're alone. You're at home and alone. And it's, you know, we definitely preach about gambling with a buddy and yeah. you don't have anybody around you. No one to say, Hey, stop playing that. You know, this is time to take a break. Any of that, your break is your phone goes with you. I'm taking a break, but I take my casino with me. Too tempting. It's way too tempting. I, it just, it wipes out the entertainment aspect, at least maybe not initially, but I think it will, if you keep doing it, you know, because initially you'll get the rush, you'll play all the games and all that kind of stuff. And I think you just lose the entertainment aspect, the drinks coming around, the camaraderie with your friends, having the competitions, friendly competitions, you know, doing the buffets and the eating and all the things that casinos offer, the spa, all that kind of stuff. All that is gone. And right. you're probably giving away comps too. I don't know how well the com I don't even know anything about the comp systems on these like FanDuel and MGM bet on it's probably nothing <laughs> or very little. Maybe a deposit bonus, but I mean those are probably tricky. deposit bonuses. Yeah, those yeah. are yeah. tricky. I mean, you got to put a lot of coin in before you can even get the match. So um yeah. Anyway, I yeah, I'm not a fan. Uh I think us three are really not a fan, but it's yeah, up to you. No. Like and I, and I understand there are certain aspects where, you know, maybe your mobility is not great or you're not able to get to a casino, but you still like to play. You know, if you're going to do that, put put those restrictions in place. And it's it's definitely good to see that places like FanDuel are at least trying to make this a little bit more in your face about, you know, how much you're spending and allow you to stop, you know, things like that. I think it's that's going to be crucial for any online casino that comes out. And uh, I guarantee you none of the sweepstakes can be, Casinos are doing that. Yeah, no, nope, not they're definitely not. They're there they're is, more on. Hey, your balance is getting low. How about right. 100 should, sweepstakes points? You know, it's like, ugh. Deposit there now, and we'll uh, give you 10 percent extra. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there is a bill right now in the Wyoming State Senate um, to allow for uh, some places like FanDuel and DraftKings to come to Wyoming, which I believe right now the only states where it's truly legal for like legal online slots it's mostly on the east coast so this would be really kind of unique uh to mm -hmm. bring it out here uh but i know the reasoning behind it is especially in the winter time wyoming just shuts down like you can't leave right. you can't do anything um so having something like that in wyoming i think would be pretty unique and cool um so we'll see we'll see how it goes you never know and the yeah. revenue has been outstanding for a lot of these online betting companies um i mean just I think that FanDuel and DraftKings together made up close to like 40% of Maryland's total wagering last year. 40% of all betting going on. So that's incredible. I don't know how many exactly casinos they have, but I know they at least have five. And that's a lot being 40% of yeah. out of that many casinos. That's that's incredible. Yeah. Um Hmm, man, where do we go from here? I I do want to do we a little bit questions. about yeah, we could do some questions. Let's do some questions before we get on to another topic because I see we're Sounds we've got 18 up. in here. So this is a really good one. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up, uh, Dave. And maybe I was about to can, pull that one up too. I know, I know. Maybe <laughs> each of us each of us give one example. So Tom says, What 
are five or six things any of you guys think about or strategize about before going to casino to play as a slot player, not as an into a uh, YouTube influencer. Uh, Dave, why don't you kick it off? Time is like my biggest thing. I do not like to be rushed. I like to have at least a couple of hours to gamble. I'm not a fan of quick jump in and play for 30 minutes and leave. I'll do that occasionally and when you have to, you know, like you're on a road trip. Hey, let's stop in here. But I like to have time. I don't like to feel rushed. I like to be laid back. I like to take my time and find a game. Um, so it's something I really think about is time. Um, you know, you don't want to feel rushed because when you feel rushed, you make mistakes. Like, let me let me gamble quicker. Let me gamble more. No, don't. Just have a, have a time. Have four hours. Have a day. Something like that. That's a good one. Uh, Brantley, why don't you go next? So, Mark, I know you're. I know I was. I'm probably stealing this one from you, but I gotta say, budget. budget. <laughs> I, got a lot, so I mean, no. obviously, you know, budget's got to be at the top. Um, oh, but for me, whatever, whatever budget I have, I kind of do my own little methods of build up. Typically, when I go to a casino, um, a lot like what Dave said, uh, because I don't film all the time. I'm actually really bad about doing that. It, it, despite having a slot channel, I do still go to the casino a lot, just on my own time off camera there there have been a lot of times i've run into quite a few viewers out there and i'm just sitting there like having my morning coffee there's no cameras around or anything so i still do go for the enjoyment factor um but for me one of the things that i strategize is always some kind of building up so like when i get there i typically will start small and then depending on how i'm doing i might move around to you know either higher bets or higher denoms or something like that. I don't just hit it hard right away because again, also tying into what Dave said, it can make for a very short trip if you do that. Um, so always evaluating, um, evaluating the budget, whatever the budget is that, that I brought, you know, and there's a lot of times that I go in with a small budget. I, you know, I don't always go in with a big budget. So, um, that's what I do is just to kind of strategize a little bit and like, well, I want to extend my time here. So I'm going to build up and start small uh, before I just, you know, go hit that pinball right away <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> so what, what about you, Mark? Uh, yeah, I should have gone first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I think you guys all go twice because it you does guys say five or six uh, things. Now to kind of expand on that. Um, I'm, I'm a real big believer in uh, session management, especially when I'm not going for filming. Um, if I'm alone, which I don't really do anymore, um, or even when we're not doing stuff channel related, um, I try to plan my sessions out. I take my budget, how much I'm actually bringing to the casino. And then I try to group those into playable times. And, you know, it, it's become, I will say, I, I'm going to say this on camera. It's become harder to do that. Um, when it's, when we're trying to focus on doing filming and stuff for the channel, because, you know, I'm ready to take my break and here comes some fans that want to play. And I love that. And I want to continue to, you know, enjoy that. And so that will break my cycle sometimes. And so I'm going to have to work a little bit harder on that. Even when we're doing stuff for the channel of finding times where I can really stay more strict with my sessions. And what I mean by a session is if I'm bringing $600 to the casino, I will probably consider three different gambling sessions at $200 each. And I separate each session whether I'm winning or losing, doesn't matter. I will separate each session with some kind of break, whether I go to eat or I go up to the room to chill for a while, do some work, whatever the case is. Um, for me, it's about splitting things up and taking those breaks in between. Um, and I've got to do a little bit better at that, I will admit. Um, I've been slipping on that a little bit. So, you know, but that's important to me. I think when people go in with their entire budget and they're into the casino and they've got it all in their pocket, it, it's too risky in my opinion to just you, you're you could make for a very short trip. And that's why all three of these things that we said are kind of all interrelated, but you, you know, you got to break up the times when you lose, because what is going to happen when you go into your first session with 200 bucks and you just start losing and you just lose the 200 bucks, you get this feeling that you got to keep chasing it. So you go into your next 200 and then suddenly you're on your last 200 and two hours, you're gone. <laughs> you yeah. know, you, your trip's done and everybody else is down there playing and having fun. And that's when you slip up and start going to the ATM or start trying to find more cash. So you can have fun with everybody. And it's like, it's a slippery slope. So you gotta, you gotta stay firm with your budget and your sessions. And when your time is up, your time is up, you cash out and you go take your break and you go do something else. 
And I will admit, this is something that I have to work a little bit harder on because I haven't been doing it lately. Uh, but it's something that we're going to improve on. So the very good question, Tom. I love yeah, it. Yeah, very good. Thank really you, Tom. Good. I know that wasn't five or six, but it's, that's yeah, a good we three. gone twice. It's a good solid three. It real harder <laughs> the second round. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, all right. You want to pull one up, uh, Dave? Yeah. Actually, I'm a... Uh... Where was that? Where'd that one go? It was a good one. Oh, here we go. That's it right there from Michelle A. Favorite casino in Las Vegas downtown and favorite place to eat in Vegas. He's going to say Italy. <laughs> oh, I know he's going to say it. It's okay. So, I finally ate there, Brantley. It is good. It is very good. I, I will yeah, say It's that. very good. For me, my favorite casino downtown... It's got to be Four Queens. Um, I thought it just has so Circa. many great games. Now, Circa's great, and it's got a great atmosphere. But as far as the games go, that's true. I mean, it's Four all Queens new has all those games you can't yeah. even find anymore. I mean, like, yeah, crap. We we what was the dog game we found? The oh, Fox, Fox and, Hound? and Hound. Yeah, yeah. Literally, had not seen that in twenty years. Yeah, and they had it there. That's awesome. Yeah. In quarters, uh, favorite place to eat <laughs> is actually not Italy. It's actually oh, wow. uh, the Caesar's Buffet, Bacchanal Buffet. That's the favorite oh, place. Oh, yeah. That is a pretty good buffet. Is, I will say that. It is amazing. Oh, man. Like, just so good. But Italy yeah, we, close we ate it. at that entire buffet, and I just kept getting more and more shrimp over and over again. Must be something you were stuck on the shrimp. Right, Proud Monkey? You're right. Here, here <laughs> comes the shrimp. the shrimp. Yeah, here it comes. <laughs> uh, yeah, Four Queens is my favorite, too, for the same reasons. Uh, what about you, Brantley? Um, downtown, you know, I will say this. Um, the Golden Nugget has some pretty good machines. Um, it does. I, I, re I really do like Circa. Like their, their machine selection, like granted, they do have a lot of newer machines. But one thing that I do like is they have almost every denomination and bet level available. So if you're a low limit player, there's tons of options. If you're a mid-level player, there's tons of options. If you're a high limit player, eh, I mean, it's okay, but it's not, you know, the best, uh, but there's just room, yeah. so many options uh, available down there. Yeah, I think it's a, you know, if you're struggling on the strip, which I think most of us do, <laughs> at least when it comes to finding the games we want to play, don't be afraid to go downtown. Uh, Dave and I are going to differ on this. I would prefer to go early in the morning before it gets insanely crazy down there, but Dave likes to go when it's crazy and, you know, to gamble, I like it when there's nobody there. But yeah, to people watch and everything downtown, you gotta go in the evening. You gotta go when the light shows on. You gotta go when the crazies are out. I feel like I need to walk around in one of those big bubbles, you know, where nobody can bump into you. you know? I'll join you, you Mark. Probably do. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll join you. That'll Not be the cute. The bubble, two of you in a bubble but... together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, separate bubbles. Separate bubbles. <laughs> separate bubbles. I feel like I need one of those just to get around down there. It's crazy. It and, is insane. Uh, hey, shout out to SD guys in here. Hey, Good SD guy. You, buddy. SD guy. Uh, I played Fox and Hound at Grand Casino recently. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, it's still out there then. Interesting. What a weird game, too. Like, the pay table is stupid simple. It's like, what, there's three options? You yeah, either get the Fox three and the Hound or the Sevens, and that's it. Yeah. It's like I think that's the it. pay table is extremely simple, although very difficult at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard to get stuff. Yeah, that's true. It kind of reminds me that's of the, the uh, remember the anything it. but six where you had the X's and the O's. So like, oh, the, yeah. basic, the basic game is just simple, but you know, it's just yep. strange. It's very weird. All right. That was that uh, Cosmo until they took it out and it's gone now. Fox and Hound. That was a great game. Oh, no, anything, uh, anything but, six. but six. Yeah. Yeah. I remember they had, they had a nice bank there of those old bar crest machines. Yep. Like six they, of them. Like yeah, or eight of them, yeah, gone. What what was it? Um, it was Plaza that had that bank of like um Quack yeah. Shot, Money Mad Martians, all those. Yep, that was the Plaza that had quarters, that, and then right? it had those, and there was quarters, and then it had yeah. the uh, dollars, uh, top dollar pinballs in another section. Yep. and yep. they're all the uh, the old old games, and they were great, in good condition yeah. too. I love. I love. I really would prefer to gamble down there now. Um, honestly, than the Las Vegas Strip. I'll probably still prefer to stay on the Strip, but 
I think yeah, downtown down where it's at, man, sure. you can make your money yeah. last so much longer down there. Lower denominations, good games, it's low volatility drinks. central, in my opinion. Yep. All right. Here's a good question. Amanda says, question, is the pinball bonus predetermined? No, it is not. But it no. is a little weird <laughs> with how it works. And let me try to explain it. So each shot is a random event. OK, but based on what previous shots have landed in determines what the RNG gets to pick from on subsequent shots. And so what I mean by this is that you don't have an equal chance of getting the hundred every single shot. If you end up getting the 100 bucket on the first shot, then there's going to be way more options of you getting 5 or 10 or 15 on the second, third, fourth, and fifth shot. Because that's the only way they can get it to average out to what is it, like 84 credits, I think it is, yeah. for the pinball bonus. The only way you can do that is to have those kind of controls in place. And so even though it's not predetermined based on what has come before, is going to determine what could potentially come in the future. Um, and big thing, there's no difference between, I know Brantley's like, I, I yeah. love the extra shot, but there's no difference between the two and the three credit. And it comes to the bonus round, exactly same averages. That's why if you do play the two coin version, you'll notice it might hit the 40 bucket a little bit more frequently than it does on the three credit. It all kind of averages out the same, but, um, yeah, so it is not predetermined. Yeah. you still have uh, RNG stops going on there. So good question, Amanda. Very good. All right. This is a good one for you, Bramley. Why don't you go ahead and take this one? Yeah. So Danny says, uh, other than a lower amount, a uh, lower must hit by amount, is there any difference? Uh, I got to move the camera here. Uh, between an Ainsworth uh, multi machine and standalone uh, must hit by machines. Thanks for all you do. So, um, in terms of the Ainsworth one, so Ainsworth actually has a couple of machines that are, you know, multi game machines that share a progressive. Um, and that progressive is going to be the exact same. Uh, the contribution rate is going to be the exact same on those. So it really doesn't matter if you're playing for that must hit by it really doesn't matter which game you select. Um, always play the base game that's comfortable for you um, and is comfortable for your budget because there is a difference in those base games. Uh, like for example, Thundercash, uh, the bonus is a lot more difficult to get where compared to something like Mustang money too. Um, so always keep that in mind, but no, like the, percentage of excuse me the percentage rate that it adds to those progressives is going to be a, the same across the board on all of those games so there's really not a big difference between just a standalone Ainsworth and then the multi-game Ainsworth machines when it comes to that now everybody else like I know Konami has some must hit buys and stuff not exactly sure um, on those but for Ainsworth I can I can only speak for those right now uh the rate of percentages that it adds to those progressives is going to be the same, whether it's a multi-machine or a standalone. Makes sense. Yeah. Play but for the base. Good game. Question. Absolutely. <laughs> Always pick the base game. Always. Right. And you know, I, I will right. just, I will just add to this too, uh, with, with that. The nice thing about the Ainsworth must hit by progressives is it's always adding at a steady rate, but that rate is in relation to what you're betting. So, you know, like, for example, you know, this is not the rate, but I'm just using it as an example. Let's just say the rate is, you know, 1%. Well, it's going to be, if you're playing $5 or 25 or whatever, it's 1% no matter what you're betting. So obviously it's going to add to the progressive quicker because 1% of 25 is a lot bigger than 1% of $5. So that is also something to consider. You're not getting an added advantage by betting higher. You're still getting the same, um, same rate. So not really something you want to overextend your budget for uh, because you're you're not getting a bigger rate. You're just essentially, you know, getting more because you're betting more, naturally speaking. So one thing to also keep in mind about that. I actually saw somebody on YouTube hit the major. It was after the fact, but he was just betting one credit. It can yeah. happen. You can bet the lowest amount in one credit and you can hit it. It's really slow. That's what I'm doing at Winstar. You know, one credit at a time. <laughs> you're not hitting any major right. wind star though, because of those scalpers. <laughs> That's right. I just happening. want one of those guys to sit next to me as I bet one credit at a time. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> and from Dennis R. Plaza is the only casino with single zero roulette table. Uh, no, Dennis, that's not true. It's the only one downtown that has single zero roulette. Uh, MGM has a single. Uh, MGM Grand has a single zero roulette. Roulette, roulette. Rue, rue, rue. Uh, also, Aria does in their high limit room, and so does Win. Uh, but yeah, the, you can find them. They're out there. 
I believe also uh, the Strat has a single zero wheel. Hmm. Uh, definitely, if you can find a single zero wheel, play it. And if you can't find a double zero, never play on a triple zero wheel. It's a sucker wheel. Yeah, that's why it's so much lower to bet it because they know the odds are so much more in their favor. Yeah, triple wheel. When when's the quadruple zero coming out? It's <laughs> I I feel like it's just a I would have of told time. you when I saw the triple zero wheel. I was like, who's ever gonna play that? And I see people <laughs> playing it, and I'm just like. You, well, why are you playing are, this? I mean, they're just not familiar. I mean, they don't, they, they the see a roulette the table and they're not looking at the wheel, you know, and it's. Oh, no, they are. They're looking at the dollars, the bet, the, the bet per uh, round, how much it is. And usually it's 10 to $15 on a triple zero. And now oh. it's $25 on a double zero. So it's a lower. And entry, they're thinking. But, in the, yeah. Yeah. They think Makes in sense. their mind, oh, it's better to play on this wheel because I can last longer. It's like, well, no. Because even though you're spending more, in the long run, your yeah. odds are so much better on the double zero wheel. And then even more so on the single zero wheel. Very true. Very true. Uh, over 311 of you in here today. Thank you so much. Wow, I nice. really do appreciate it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful night and enjoying the chat here. Uh, we will try to get to everybody's questions as soon as we can. We've got 30 in the queue right now. Doesn't mean we'll take all of them. So keep asking them. Um, if we see something that comes up, we will certainly take it. And, and also stick around. Take- yeah, stick, stick around. around. We might we might answer your question later, so stick around. There That's right. Oh, I got a quick one again from Donna Dav- Deborah Davis here. Why don't casinos have metal detectors? Uh, they've Some actually do. had metal detectors before. Uh, yeah. Downtown, especially, they've had metal detectors. Um, it was getting to be a big problem down there. It's much better now with the police presence. Some casinos, um, Philadelphia, I was there. They had a uh, metal detector. So did Baltimore had a metal detector. Um, both at Harrah's properties or Caesar's properties. So a lot of them do. It just depends on where you are and how bad the area is. Very true. And since we're on this topic, I knew it, anytime you mention <laughs> pinball, top dollar is going to come up. The next top so. dollar pinball is going to come up. Um, did you ever respond to my comment on your short, Brantley? No, I didn't yet. Okay. <laughs> I saw it though. <laughs> He's like, why is pinball, like, what did you say, which is better, pinball or top dollar, as you stand yeah. next to a pinball machine? Right. Hey, but you know what? I just I just laid out the math and said, you know, uh, you guys yeah, I mean, you were right. You guys decide. <laughs> so Janet says, is top dollar bonus predetermined? No, I, this, is, this is a big one, too. Like, each offer that you receive on top dollar is a completely separate event. So it does not look at previous offers and decide to punish you for being an idiot and not taking something good. Like it doesn't do that. Um, it doesn't even know it. It doesn't even know it. Like as soon as you hit that try again button, that is stopping the RNG and picking what the next result's going to be for it to show you. So, you know, don't, but it if does you get a good offer, by down. God, take the fucking thing. Like don't, offer. I mean, seriously, if it's a good offer, take it. And man, have we seen people, Man, there was somebody in New York, New York once playing the five dollar one. He was getting like eighty five credits, one hundred sixty credits. He kept passing it. He's like, only if I get the Mark thousand. and I are like <laughs> fourth. Like, fourth offer is always the best. Not good strategy. Got to play good strategy on oh, that game. It's God. one of the few where it's like you you do have to play proper strategy. It's almost like playing video poker in a way. If you don't do it, you're gonna kill your RTP or your return to player on that game. So. Yeah. yeah, take the advice the machine gives you. Unless you're drunk and you're making reckless decisions. <laughs> and um, Stephen Lowe says, I got a 25 credit pinball bonus once. Ooh. Wow. Been there, Stephen. That's got to be as hard as getting the whole chamber filled up, in my opinion. It's got to yeah. be. That's all fives? <laughs> all now, fives. My, my 25 was on the four, you know, four, four spins. Uh, four shots. Oh, the four credit one. And it was, it was a ten, and the rest fives. <laughs> oh and man! And like every, every time the five hit, I'm like, "There's no way it's gonna hit three times in a row." Five. Now I will say this: I did one time, one time on a four credit, uh, or four four shot pinball. I got an offer I didn't even think was possible with, uh, or not an offer, but a pinball bonus that I didn't even think was possible. It hit the hundred three times and then the eighty. Whoa. I've never Whoa. seen it. I've never seen a pinball. Yeah, do that's that. crazy. It was that's crazy. Three hundred and eighty yeah. credits for a pinball bonus. Uh, that's rare. I like so much how 
fans of pinball and fans of top dollar, pinball fans will still say, oh, yeah, that's a great offer. I'll take it. Like, you'd have a choice. It, it's, that's it. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> but it's that terminology yeah. gets stuck in our head. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm man. taking that. I'm like, well, you got it. You don't have to take it. You're stuck with it. <laughs> Oh man. Um, let's get to some of the more of these comments. We got a lot of good ones in here. We'll do some rapid NJ's fire ones. Like guy in the house. Oh, go ahead. Put it up. No, that's all I was just saying. Here? NJ's like that in the house. Oh, yeah, NJ's NJ. In okay. Gotta love them cherries. Run it through the garden. <laughs> uh Jan Newman says heading the bow tomorrow for some casual slot play. Uh Beau Ravage has a good selection of games. Uh definitely a lot of bar crest there. We have a it's a Gulf Coast slots, I think it is. It's a guy that I've yep. known for a while. He's got a YouTube channel. He plays at the bow all the time. And man, I'm seeing all those big times pay, triple stars, um, lots of top dollars and pinballs in there. So it's it's a good it's place to list. be. And it's an MGM property too. So you can use your comps. It's on the list to go. Yeah, we'll it's make it out the there. Go. We get the see. flight offers. Man, the ones I've been getting are terrible. They're, they want me to pay to get on the flight. What the hell is that about? So you want me to go and gamble or you need to pay me. <laughs> I got a $50 flight, but a $250 free play. You know, that's, the that's on top. That's the bonus. Yeah. And then wow. the next month, $60 flight and $60 free play. That's I'm like, the one I got. Wait a minute. Why'd this go down? <laughs> I, I think it's just. <laughs> it's just random. They're just trying to see which one will grab you, me. you know. So you want to wait for the highest, you know, for the highest one, so they know that they have to, you know, they should bid on. And then you, they should, you know, you take book. you, you should be able to go to a website and say, tell you what, you give me two hundred in free play and a free flight, then I'll come out there, and then they'll say accept or reject. <laughs> That'd be cool. That's what they should do. You know, if those flight offers were better dates, I would go in an instant. But they're always like uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Or Thursday yeah, it's through weird Monday. Times, yeah, yeah like, it's never I the don't weekend. Go then. Yeah, it's never the weekend. Like, yeah, it's like Sunday through four Thursday. days in Biloxi. Yep. And it's a chartered flight, which means you're on their schedule. Uh, when Jody and I went out there once and used that offer, um, we were scheduled to fly home, and they're like, "Ah, planes on the fritz, just like in casino." Same thing. You don't want to mess around with Plans these things. The you don't want to take chances. It's, it's going to be tomorrow before we can get you out of here. Here's an extra fifty dollars in dining credit for you. As our way down, down here than up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same. Same. Same scene. All right. <laughs> and Ghost Shaver says, "How do you approach a person that you know that has a gambling problem and they should get help?" But we got to start by saying we're not counselors. Like we can't tell yeah. you what to do. Um, all we can do is just give you general advice. We did a video about this a couple of days ago, just kind of getting this out in the open because it is important to talk about it. Um, I I don't know. Um, maybe we could call sometime live um, the gambler hotline and ask them if we have somebody that yeah. we think needs help, what should we do? And maybe we do that and put it on the air and see what they say. You know, I really don't know how to approach it with, somebody i mean if it's a good friend i'd always pull them aside and say listen man i'm just saying this because you're a friend but you know have you ever considered blank 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 you know but if it's a friend it's probably different, different. if it's a, if it's a stranger so i i can actually stranger, give you the, yeah stay away yeah from that. i can give you the casino <laughs> answer i can yeah. give you the actual casino's answer and the casino's answer is as an employee you are not allowed to approach somebody if you feel they have to do it themselves. Yeah. They have to do it themselves. They have to say so those like, words, right? Yeah. Like if yeah. it's, yeah. you know, like what Mark was saying, it's a, there's a big difference is, is this a friend? Is this somebody that you know? And in that case, do what Mark said, pull them aside, have a, have a talk with them. But if it's a stranger, you do not approach them with that <laughs> at all. Yeah. I have, I Don't have get confronted involved. someone who was an acquaintance and uh, not a good friend, but a friend of a friend. And it was very rough because they couldn't see it. They were in it. They yeah. couldn't see it. Most of the time. You and, can't. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, I've, I had noticed you, you're, you're on your third trip and you're like, you've pulled out three credit cards now, you know, what's going on? Are you, know, are you okay? And the, 
the guy was just instantly defensive, you know, and that's how yeah. you know someone's got yeah. a problem is when they're defensive yeah. right off the bat, you know, of why are you talking to me, you know, in my business, everything else. I'm like, listen, if you didn't have a problem, you wouldn't be defensive about it. You would be, thank you for asking. Open no, I'm good. It, yeah. I've set yeah. this money aside. I just forgot the money at home. Anything like that could have been said. But as soon as you get defensive, you know that person on some level understands they have a problem. Yeah. And it's difficult. It is a difficult conversation. It's the same with drinking, drugs, any of those. It is the exact same. There's no difference yeah. in gambling addiction versus drugs and alcohol. It's the exact same. And it's going to be difficult. Yeah. The only thing that we can really do is is to is to try to get it. I mean, all we can do is work with you personally, people that are listening to this. And again, we did a great episode on this. It was one of the tips. I think it was Monday. I can't remember now. It's all blur. <laughs> um, but the only thing that we can do is because we've been through this several times, both of us, um, like Dave, do you have a gambling problem? <laughs> um, That's, you ask people right away. <laughs> <laughs> you ask people. I've, you ask people directly. Don't don't even beat up around the bush. Ask them directly. Well, they're probably not going to be honest, though. But what I'm trying to say That's is that thing. what yep. what I'm trying to say is all we can do is to let you guys know what the warning signs are, so that when you hopefully, if you keep listening to us repeatedly tell you what the warning signs are that you might have a gambling problem, that that might be something that would trigger you to stop and call that number or do whatever it is to get help. Um, that's all we can really do here. And I mean, I just don't think you should approach anybody that you don't know. I think it's very dangerous. Um, it could probably, you know, I know you're wanting to help. Like, listen, I would love to help everybody. Dave's right. I've sat behind people at the ATM when I'm ready to cash my voucher in and they're trying every single card in their wallet. And I see it on the screen, insufficient funds, insufficient funds. And it's yeah. like, you just want to go up to them and give them a hug and say, guy, just leave. It's okay. Like, just take it easy. You want to help everybody. I get it. But you just can't get involved with stuff like that. And there's nothing that you can really do to go to the casino and say, hey, I think this guy's got a problem. Because like Brantley said, there's nothing they can do about it unless they admit to themselves. And so all we can do is try to get the word out, like get people to understand uh, what this is. It is a disease. It, there are some triggers and warning signs that you should look for and can look for. And if people know that, maybe they'll be able to I don't know. Just remember it. I don't know. <laughs> it's 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 a, it's a tough thing. It's really a tough thing. But that's all we can do. So, but we do appreciate you wanting to help people. I mean, that's that's very important. Yeah. Uh, but there's only so much yeah. you can do. Yeah. All right. This one from see. Amanda. Are cashiers annoyed if I want to break larger bills? Example: Give them two hundred dollars in hundred bills and have them break it in tens. No, they're they're not annoyed. Mm -hmm. uh, they probably would say the ATM also does this just to let you know that the uh, little bill acceptor also breaks down bills. But no, they, as part of their job, they're just as happy. Now, I wanted to put this one up, too, because it was relevant. Uh, I went to the Carolina Casino to do the $100 challenge. I went to the cage and she told me that they do not have $10 bills and said because they're bad luck. Windstar doesn't give $10 bills either. So what is there bad I've luck always, with $10 bills? I've never heard of this. I've always there heard is a reason. Bad luck. There is a reason. There, there, is, a, bad there luck. is a reason. I can give okay. you the actual casino reason. Right, it's not because of the answer. bad luck. Um, when I worked in the, when I worked for the casinos, the biggest problem that we had was counterfeit tens. $10 bills are the most heavily counterfeited. Um, we had to, you know, check them all. And there was one instance where a bunch of fake tens had ended up in the vault and it was a big, it was a big ordeal. Most casinos do not like dealing with $10 bills because typically, um, and actually a lot of casinos will get suspicious of you. If you come in and you've got a bunch of $10 bills, immediately you're going to be watched because those $10 bills are the most heavily counterfeited. So that's, that's one of the reasons, but Interesting. yeah, hmm. it's weird. I don't know why, but yeah, casinos do watch. Give me fives instead next time you go. That's yeah. what we ended up doing at Windstar is just give us a bunch of fives. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, there's uh, a good one here from uh, Hype Man Henry. Does Foxwood have any comps to get cheap rooms like Vegas or is it non-existent? Actually, I've been getting room offers since I went to Foxwood's. Uh, yeah, right. Same here. Quite regularly. 
they have just been flooded my inbox with, hey, want to come back? Want to come back? I'm like, you realize I'm in Texas. You have my license. You have everything about me. You know <laughs> I'm not there. But no, the, now I can't comment on whether there are great offers, but I can definitely say getting them regularly, I kind of think that they are kind of good offers. But I do know that Foxwoods and Mohegan both, you got to be on that upper tier to get great offers. So I don't know if my offer is like 100% free. Like, do I get also, you know, all my resort credit is all that in there, you know, but they seem. I think, I think the thing to watch out for them though, is that their tier status resets every three months. Yeah. Mm. That is so odd. So after it's been three months, we may not be getting anything. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're coming up on that right now. Maybe we should book it now. Just, you know, (laughs) just book. We got to find out when the the Slotacon is before April 1st comes around. (laughs) Yeah. Let us know NJ. All right. Let's see. And uh, this is a good one. Bob Burns says, sometimes winning sucks. Like the first thing you see when you, re- when you hear that, the first thing is like, what, the, what is this guy nuts? Everybody likes what's winning. going on, but we got to finish the sentence on a recent vi- visit. I got a hand pay on my third spin stayed to play the balance of my comp play and went home after a half hour. So that's, that's really awesome. Good. Bob. Like that's, that's to go. good stuff, but that's not what most people do. Yeah. <laughs> that is not that- what most people do. So that's taking them for all they gave you. And if you're, if you're going to hit, if you're going to hit a hand pay, I, you know what, Bob, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to say, I I kind of agree with you on this one, because if you're going to hit a hand pay, the best time to do it is on your last day or the end of a visit or the end of a trip. If you go in, um, this, this happened to me recently at Wendover, um, just got to Wendover, put my stuff up in the room, came downstairs and it was like third spin in, you know, got a hand pay. That sucks because now you're there for the whole trip and you're like, oh, well, I want to save it, but I got three more days and you know you're going to probably end up playing it. That's where right. that lockbox comes into play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, it, it does It does kind of suck. You know, I, I would much rather win on the last day or when you're getting ready to leave than when you first get there, um, yeah. especially if it's a place like you said that you were you went home. So I'm assuming it's a local casino closest local casino to me is three hours away so if i drive three hours walk in the door and hit a jackpot i'm like oh it's like i'm glad it. i got the money but i'm like i don't want to go home right now like yeah. then i gotta get back it's like i'm <laughs> still stretching my legs from the drive so so i, I do agree with you on that yeah. and just remember guys it's not the casino that's like oh wait a minute oh here we go <laughs> <laughs> gotta put the hat you on for this keep one that on just remember, guys, it is not the casino giving you a win when you first got there, hoping that you're just going to spend it all back by the end of the uh, visit. Okay. Good right, one. Love the hat. <laughs> Love the hat. All right. I wonder if I can make a tinfoil cowboy hat. Uh, maybe I'll take there an old go. cowboy hat and I'll wrap it in tinfoil. Just put it, yeah, just wrap it in tinfoil and put, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. And, oh, I got to put the hat on again for this one. There we go. Well, I might as well leave it on for these questions, right? So the hat means it's a conspiracy theory, right? That's what that's kind of the indication, right? So Patricia says, does changing to noms help your winning chance? So it is true. Oh man, Bradley, we're about to get into the RTP Uh-oh. or payback percentage discussion. I know it's coming. We're we're getting um, in the weeds. You get into the weeds, but that's okay. I totally understand your question, Patricia. It's so, a yes and no. It's a yes and no, yeah. So uh Generally speaking, the higher the denomination, which is not bet level like credit bets, but the denomination itself on the machine, or if it's a multi-denom, whatever you selected, the payback percentage setting is going to be higher on that. But you, as a player, in your individual sessions on a slot machine or even an entire visit or multiple visits, are not going to be able to tell the difference between 98% and 92%. Okay, and that's typically what you would find in a range of, say, a dollar to twenty five dollars or a hundred dollar machine. You're not going to notice the difference. Certainly, certainly not enough to cause you to want to go beyond your budget and beyond your comfort level in betting. And I think that's the biggest thing that we got to get across to people is that even though it is technically true that betting on a higher denomination machine has better returns in the long run, individual sessions, you're not going to it is not worth. And I can say this definitively hands down it is not worth upping your bet for that reason it's not 
because it's not going to be drastic enough. It would have to be a difference between 10% and 98% before you would even notice anything in 100 or 200 spins. And it's not that big of a range. It's, it's 5% or 6%. And we can go into big detail about why that is. We've done lots of videos about it. Brantley has too. You know, this is a topic we've kind of beaten to death. But no, we don't want you to up your bet because you've heard that the payback percentage return is better because it's not it's the trade-off isn't there if that makes right. sense you yeah know, i could just it's not this magic number it's like everybody should just start playing hundred dollar machines i don't care if you have three hundred dollar budget you should be playing hundred dollar machines because the payback returns higher it's like yeah but over what 10 million spins it's higher <laughs> so just be careful patricia stay within your budget and your means always that is what you should be focusing right. on not payback percentage period all right, Dave, you take some. Here's one from Paul Carroll, Keller. Why don't they have $50 bills at casinos? Well, so there's actually multiple reasons for this. Uh, one of the ones you'll probably hear the most is that 50s are bad luck. And the reason they are is kind of mysterious of why they are bad luck or not. But Doyle Brunson once said that no poker player uses 50s because supposedly they're going to get it confused with 20s. It was in his book he wrote. It has been saying it since, you know, the 1940s, so it kind of took effect. The other reason is that a $50 bill in a casino serves no purpose. Uh, you cannot make a good amount with a $50 bill. You just use, a, you know, 20s and 5s. And generally speaking, a drawer in a casino has four trays. You have 1s, 5s, 20s, 100s. 50s, you have a 50 and two 20s, that makes 90. You just use the extra 20s. Um, so it's just one of those things. It's accounting, it's bookkeeping. Um, it's been along for a long time. It was before the 50 was redesigned and I'm sure it has something to do with people gluing zeros onto, you know, $50 bills to make or $5 bills to make them look like fifties. But yeah, they are just not prevalent. Uh, you will not find them in a casino. Actually change that. I found them in one casino. It was the Rockford casino, hard rock in Chicago, outside Chicago. Hey, and you I was did like, every casino in this what is on this the planet dude. they're like i have not i have not i try to i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe one day but uh but they had 50s and i even asked why you had 50s and i was like oh someone just brought those in so we we're getting them out of the drawer i was like okay so yeah legitimate reason why 50s were there at that time but that's the reasons i know of anybody else uh, got anything else on 50s <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, Brantley, I want you to take this one because it's another Mustang Money 2 question. Yeah, sure. So Brian says, was playing Mustang Money 2, got the free games, hit three horse heads in the, I got to move the camera there, in the middle screen, uh, gave me a thousand credits, but no retrigger. Uh, why is that when three heads uh, retrigger? Thank you. So most likely um, with this case, so if you got that high of a credit amount, um, you probably had the Mustang Money feature within the bonus where it turns the first reel and the fifth reel wild and those three heads happen to line up that actually is a pay and also that is the elusive five head horse pay um because you've got the wilds on both sides and then you've got the three horses to line up in the middle that's a really really difficult hit to get um but nonetheless it is a hit because those horses also do act as wilds um had they not lined up uh during that mustang money feature you would have gotten the re-trigger but I would say that I, if it were me, I would much rather have the thousand credits than a retrigger for that one. So you got very yeah. lucky with that. But the only reason why it didn't retrigger is because it lined up. So short answer for that one. But yeah, very good hit on that. Very difficult hit to get. I still have yet to get it. I've seen it, but I still have yet to get it. Yeah. What's the other one? The Eagle Bucks getting the wild on the first reel and then the locked. Is there yeah. a wild on the first reel? In the uh, no, there's only wild on the on the last reel. For um, well, there is a wild, but it's not. There's the, there's the wild game. symbol. The eagle, yeah. yeah, on the first reel. Okay. Let's see. Man, so many questions. Oh, this is a good one. I wanted to bring this up because I've been playing it a lot lately. So Brian uh, says, if I play online casinos, it's the free ones. Most popular slots can be played free online with fake coins. Run out of coins, refresh the page. Yeah, Vegas. Yeah. Let me get this right. VegasSlotsOnline.com is a great, great site for this. Um, they've got, they've got Thunder Cash. They've got Mustang. They got all the Ainsworth games there that you can play. A lot of IGT favorites are there. 
uh, it's free money. You just play it. Um, I kind of do it when I'm on long, boring meetings sometimes. Don't tell my boss. <laughs> um, I'll just whip open that tab and just start playing slots for free, <laughs> just for fun. Uh, but yeah, they have a lot of the classics there. Um, it's a good, great site to play. And yeah, you don't have to buy virtual currency or virtual coins or anything that all the mobile apps do. Uh, you just refresh the page and suddenly you're back to the, the starting amount. So it's a fun place. Vegas Slots Online. Did I say that right? Yeah. Vegas Slots, Vegas Online. slots Online. Okay. Yeah, and I love it. this one from Hero Hayes. Spending this Easter in the casino. Had a free $100 dinner instead of with my family gathering. Am I a bad person? Well, Hero, you're asking the wrong person. Because <laughs> I actually got a free night stay plus a Thanksgiving dinner plus free play from uh, a casino in Shreveport one Thanksgiving. And when I told my mom I wasn't coming home for Thanksgiving, I was going to a casino. Yeah, I'm still kind of paying for that one. But again, you're asking the wrong person. Make the <laughs> offer. Go. Well, at least we know you don't lie to your mama. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, That would have been a perfect time. It's like, ah, I can't come, here. man. I, did the, I got the stomach flu or, you know. At least you were honest. Yeah, I mean, I had Thanksgiving dinner just as good. <laughs> <laughs> it was just in a casino. <laughs> just in a casino. All right, let's see. Uh, Those things where maybe you should ask the people you haven't done that. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, I need to refresh my do not disturb here. People are calling me. All right. So KCVGCX says had a couple sessions with double top dollar and pinball in the new cabinets. Pinball is fun, but you go through some big swings. Yeah, that's definitely true on yeah. the new pinball. Uh, that's pinball double gold, by the way. Uh, but love the new double top dollar and two credit. Do you find the same experience? Yeah, definitely find the same. Uh, <laughs> and funny enough that you mentioned like big swings. I've gone through big swings on my love hate for that game too. <laughs> like I, I started out not liking it and then I had this surge where I enjoyed it and now I don't even want to play it anymore because <laughs> it's like I've had so many rough sessions on it where it's just it's tough to get the bonus. The bonus pays well generally, but yeah, pinball double gold is just not, not for me anymore. And I know uh, Dave and Brantley, why don't you give us your comments on that one too? Yeah, you know, p pinball double gold. I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I know it is pinball. I mean, I, I love the game yeah. of pinball. Pinball is my all time favorite game. I was excited when this new version of pinball came out. It just does not have the same feel for me. I, I, I don't, I really, I cannot get on board with the new pinball double gold. It just doesn't do it for me. I don't like the base game. I don't like how you have to play 10 credits and then, you know, it's like, so if I were to play a $5 denomination new pinball double gold, I have to spend $50. I was like, I might as well just go play the old pinball at $25, two credit. $25. And I get a better bonus. And that way yeah, it's a guaranteed true. jackpot. Yeah. If I get it, you know, part of the thing, especially if you're a high limit player, I know not a lot of people are high limit players, but if you start getting into the high limit realm, pinball is exciting because you know, the second that pinball logo hits the line, you're getting a jackpot. That's just not the case with the new one. It's right. It doesn't have yeah. the same feel for me. I can't get on board with it. Uh, the new top dollar I'm fine with, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's the same math pretty much for the most part. Um, but yeah, that new, the new pinball just, it doesn't do it for me. I for think me, the only thing that I wanted to mention else. in addition, the only thing I wanted to mention in addition to that is that to, to help balance out that infrequency, though, is that they do have more frequent line hits than right. single pay line pinball. There is that. Because <laughs> pinball and top, double top dollar um, and even regular top dollar to that extent, not known for their line hits. It's, it's more for the right. bonus, like on the single pay line. So at least you can get some decent line hits on the pinball. Boy, but the teasing is ferocious on that game. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it is so not brutal a, and mean. <laughs> All right, Michael, Mr. Michael Muss is in here. Good to see you, man. Uh, this Michael channel, these guys, and this community rocks. Thanks for your hard work, guys. I appreciate that. Thank, thank you, you so Michael. much. And he has been a member for one Make month sure. now, so thank you so much. Make sure to check out Michael on YouTube. That's right. And, and $3 a $3 super sticker. Super sticker. Thank That's you, from man. the money he took from us at Winter Winter Chicken Dinner. Yeah, <laughs> boy, he was, man, he was tearing up those contests. <laughs> 
not only that, but we did we did one uh, without you on pinball, and he got that one too. He was Jeez. cleaning up and the double top dollar. I think no, that was Sheldon. Sheldon got that one anyway. And shout out to David. David's now a new member. So new really, member. Thank, thank you, David. David. Thank you so much, David. And uh, uh, membership will get you access to our Discord uh, chat. We have a lot of fun. We talk all day long in there. Um, it's a lot of fun. And also some uh, just some special videos here and there that we do. And then also a member giveaway every single month. So we've already done this month, and we will have it again next month. All right. Let's get back oh, to Nancy questions. B. Mark, your Wednesday a.m. Uh, session for Gamble Smart Gamble Safe <laughs> today was excellent. Very informative and fact based with visuals to back it up. Love the daily tips you and Dave provide for all of us. Many thanks, Nancy. We enjoy doing them and we love providing you guys with info. We really do. Yep. And uh, keep on commenting on those videos because believe it or not, you guys generate a lot of ideas for us because it's, yeah. it's hard to do five a week. <laughs> We're going to run out yeah. of ideas, um, but they keep coming up. So, uh, we do really do appreciate uh, all the comments and support on those. And I know a lot of you look forward to it every single morning. And uh, this one was a lot of fun to do personally for me, because I think it's a fascinating topic of how people get sucked into believing all these crazy things about casinos and how these slot machines work and all that. So it's, it's good to put some proof on the paper on why we're actually, why we feel that way. I think a lot of people like we can't, we can't get frustrated at people because I totally get it. Like, even, even when you like, just think about your everyday life. Let's say you've always wondered how something works. Like how does a dishwasher clean dishes? That's probably a bad example, but no. what do you do? You go to, you go to, I don't know why it just came to me. It's such a weird thing. You know, so you go to Google and you search and you find the first site and you read it. You're like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. And then if somebody comes along and tells you several years later, no, that's not how they work. This is how they work. And I know that because I've worked on them. You're like, no, no, I think that's not how they work. And it's, it's natural. It's what humans go through throughout their life. It's typically whoever you hear it from first or whoever you make the connection with first. And that implants in your mind that that is the truth. That is how these things work. And casinos are like, it's a hotbed for this stuff because nobody's talking. Oh, yeah. Everybody's tight lipped about it. Everybody that works in the casinos and manufacturers are very tight lipped. They're all nervous to get this information out. And we're, we're hoping to change that. It'll take time, just like with anything else. It takes time to break through that transparency layer. But I, that's why I totally get it. I understand why people feel that way, and they feel very strongly. I mean, go look at the comments on the video we got today. Some of them were pretty fierce, and it's fine. I, I can't – I mean, it's frustrating, but it's fine. I, I can't fault them for having their beliefs, and it's all about what's up here and how the brain works. It's a very fascinating subject. So, anyway, I appreciate that. It was a fun one to do. All right, back to some more questions. I'm going to do one from Amanda. With online gambling, you have to make your own drinks. I 100% agree. <laughs> Not Zero a fan. Story. Zero stars. <laughs> Zero stars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, here's a, good, here's a good one. What's a small budget for you? Hmm. That's a tough hmm. one. Well, a small budget. I'm, a, I'm going last on this one. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> You're just going to base your decision on what we say. Nope, mm. I've already got it written down. Here, I think I'll for me, like the minimum I like to take to a casino, if I know I'm going to be there for a while, is 300 bucks. That's kind of where I always start. Um, I feel like I can get a good amount of play on that amount of money. Um, so, yeah, 300 is probably the minimum for me for a long casino visit. And when I say long, I mean at least a day staying overnight kind of thing. So for me, I can, I can give my answer on this. I live in Wyoming. We'll just start with that. <laughs> Everything is far away. So that's one of the main reasons. So like for me, I typically only do one casino trip a month, obviously when I'm not working, but one casino trip a month and a small budget for me, like it's not worth the trip for me to go unless it's, I have like at least $500 minimum. Like, cause I, I have to now justify three hours there, three hours back. That's six hours of my day for travel. So, you know, if the casino was right across the street, I could be like, oh yeah, like 20, 40 bucks. That's fine. But the fact that it's not, obviously my minimum has to be a lot higher because I have to justify that travel as well. So what about you, Dave? Zero. Zero. I'll play with my free play and get out. 
uh, just show up. Play, nah, you get set out. us up. You totally yep, set I us did. up. <laughs> that is why you didn't want to go first. You want to make us look like idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked perfectly. It worked perfectly. <laughs> but no, there's there's no budget, small or big. It's the budget that works for you. It's the budget right. that fits your financial situation. And don't be, a, you know, $20. Take $20 if it's, that's what fits with you. Whatever that dollar amount is, don't think that, oh, it's too small. I don't know if I should take this little amount. No, just go. $20 lasts you 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, and then you're out. There you go. You had fun. Go. So don't worry about a budget and know how much amount is and how much yeah. other people play. Play with your own money. Play with and also play. budget is very budget is very personal too. We've we've oh, touched absolutely. on that a lot. I mean, Mark and I did a live stream about how much should you bring with you to the casino. And really it's a hundred percent what is comfortable for you. You know, we can't speak for everybody. Um, you know, there are players out there that they do go to the casino with 10 or $20 and that's comfortable for them. And that's fine. Um, and then there are also, you know, people out there that go to the casino with $20,000 and think that it's small, you know? So it's yeah. like, it's, it's a wide I mean, spectrum. There's not a, there's not a set answer for that. So always play just what you're comfortable with. Very true. All right. Let's see what else we got. Uh, Psycho Analyst says, if a slot machine malfunctions by freezing and starts again and hits a jackpot, is it voided? No. No. That situation is not voided. It is going to be extremely hard and rare these days for any machine to malfunction in a way that it would not pay you what it says it's going to pay you. I mean, it's... This is a pro. I mean, if you look this up on YouTube, it's the same story over and over and over again. Lady playing a penny machine said she won something like 10 million. It's not even possible. It's the same story. Um, this does happen, but th these machines are built in a way that they are every single microsecond that something is happening on the machine. It is logging what is happening from you hitting the button, putting bills in. Even they even have tilt sensors. If somebody hits the machine, it records that there is a tilt in there that somebody actually physically hit the machine. Like all these things are being recorded so that it can resume exactly where it left off for any kind of catastrophic failure, software error, power outage, freezes up, all those types of things. And so if you ever do see that, um, I've had this happen countless times to me where it goes into a bonus round. It happened on a Lord of the Rings once where it just froze. It just froze in the middle. The music was still playing, but the game was not proceeding. And, Sure enough, they just came and reset the machine and it resumed the bonus right where I left off. And they're all going to do that. That's the way they're built these days. So you don't need to worry about it so much. This is one of those things that people just get really concerned and worried about um, because they, they feel like, you know, the casinos manipulate. Should I get the hat again? No. Yeah. <laughs> casinos, you know, casinos see that a big hit is about to, you know, they're you're about to hit the grand and they don't want to pay it out. So they're going to trigger something in the back that's going to cause the machine to lock up so they can malfunction and void your win. No, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The machines are not built that way anymore. So feel comfortable. You're safe. They have a lot of protection built in. Right. All right. And for BuzzNet slots, hey, guys, is it safe for my wife and I to play on one player's card to double my tier points? Is there any mm. consequences? Depends, depends on, on the casino, casino <laughs> and depends on the player's club rules and terms and conditions and all that read that carefully uh that's going to be in small print you may not share cards a lot of casinos don't have that they don't care at the same time if they say hey stop that say please show me where it's written and i will and they will happily show you that documentation uh if you ever have a doubt ask the player's desk but most places it's okay but always check the terms and conditions on the player's card before you start doing it because they will just say, oh, all your all your tier points, all your comps are voided in a heartbeat. And a lot of systems like MGM, for example, it will lock you out. So if you have your card in another one that you left and somebody starts playing that machine and you try to activate, you put your card in another one, it's going to lock it. So, you know, they, they have protections in place from dual play, basically. But yeah, check the rules. Don't try to game the system. Let Dave do that. And then yeah. tell you what you can and can't do. Don't, don't print out a whole bunch of players' cards and then put them in a whole bunch of the slots in the high limit, hoping you'll get random points from people because it only works sometimes. 
<laughs> I haven't done hey. that in a long time. A long, long time. But it did. Wait, work you did me. that? What's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. It was an experiment. Oh, I think you should go work. back to your towels and ketchup bottles. Hey, you got to try Keep different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we should definitely close the show on this topic because I, I, I think we all have something to say on this. Hyperman Henry says, I know you I hate them about the social casinos like Chumba, but why is it? So hate's kind of a strong word. Maybe we can use nope. hate, but I can use hate. Okay. I'll, I'll make mine really brief because I, I want you guys to talk on this topic. So what are social casinos? Let's start with that. So social casinos are casinos that are surround or based on sweepstakes. Sweepstakes, like giving you gift cards and money in exchange for sweepstake coins or SC is what they typically call them. And so you buy these with real money. And the biggest flag for me right off the bat is they will let you use anything. Credit card, debit card whatever you got, PayPal, Bitcoin, whatever you got, they will let you use it. Um, there's no restrictions there whatsoever. And so what you're actually doing is buying virtual currency, which is like their play for free money. But in exchange for buying that, they give you sweepstakes coins, which in exchange are equal to the dollar. So if you buy 100 sweepstakes coins, it's $100 that you have to gamble with. And so when you do cash out, what you're actually doing is cashing out prizes but it just happens to be paid out in cash in most instances. Um, so that's what sweepstakes casinos are. Um, they're not legitimate casinos in the sense that they're regulated like legitimate casinos, like BetMGM, FanDuel, those kind of things. Um, there's very little to no regulation, and these are mostly overseas too. I mean, do you really want to be giving your bank account information to people in Malaysia and stuff? I don't know. I, it just it seems weird to me. So that's... There's a lot of negatives to this, but let's let's go around the table here. And Brantley, why don't you go next? What yeah. So here, here's the the biggest problem that I have. Well, there's a lot of problems with social casi social casinos are getting to be a massive problem. Um, even so much as I know Michigan uh, recently, it has gone all the way through their legislature to try to ban these places from Michigan. The biggest thing, I mean, this is a big can to open, but. The thing that I don't like right off the bat is the fact of they call themselves a casino and they call themselves slots. And it really, there are so many people out there that when they, when they go and they play on here, they think that they're playing slots. Guys, these are not slot machines that, at all, at all. You know, there, and I know some people say, oh, well, it's random. God, it does not work like a slot machine at all. Like it is a hundred percent. I mean, these things, absolutely, it is a computer program that looks like a slot machine, and that is it. These are not slots. They do not have to be fair. You are not playing, you know, against a random number generator, so to speak. Um, it is not a it is not a casino. And like Mark mentioned as well, most of these places are based overseas. I mean, you're giving your bank account out to you know, places in, you know, Malta or India or something like that. That's, that's completely insane. And not only that, but because they are not regulated and because there is zero protection in place and that that's a huge thing, you know, you absolutely, you know, they'll let you play like what Mark said, they'll let you put whatever you want in there, however you want to do it. But when you go to cash out, Oh, there's all these things that you have to do and they will find anything. If you don't dot your I and cross your T or if they just don't feel like paying you one day, they don't have to. And I know there's a lot of people out there that say, oh, well, I want a couple hundred dollars on Chumba and it let me cash out. Yeah. Wait till you win 30,000 and <laughs> come back and you tell me yeah. that, um, man, social casinos are a major problem. Um, they're, they're getting a lot more widespread and to be honest, it's hundred percent trickery is what it is. It's a hundred percent trickery. These are not real slots. They're not real casinos. And really it's, it's a computer program that just looks like it. They can manipulate it however they want to, however they want to, you know, if they're, uh, it is a hundred percent possible for them to just say, Oh, you know what? Like, you know, we're going to do a video on this. Let's make it look really good. Let's make it look as good as possible. And they can trigger it hundred percent. They can. Yeah. And it's, it's a major problem because then people see these wins and they're like, wow, I want to do that too. And it's like, 
emulate. Yeah. To be that people. Don't. For, Don't. For, for yeah. me, it's I have never liked the social casino aspect, but I liked it even less when I found out that there are groups that people. So like it's a, it's a social casino. It's you're talking to people, chatting people. Then they have these guilds, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, guild, uh, group, you know, pack, whatever you want to call them. There are groups of people that form these different clubs and you can join, you know, uh, West Side slot players, Northeasters, all that kind of stuff. Well, you have to spend more money to stay in these groups because they have spend limits. Hey, you only bought 10 million coins this month. You're out of the group. You have to buy 11 million to stay in. It's a peer pressure bully system that essentially gets people to gamble well beyond their means to be accepted. And I'm never a fan of that. It's that kind of that kind of environment is never good, nor is it healthy. I do want to add, I do want to add one more thing in here. Um, just cause I saw a comment about it. There is a major distinction between a social casino and I, I gotta, I hate even calling it a casino cause it's not, but these social, <laughs> right. when, when we're talking about social casinos, we're talking about Chamba, lucky land, uh, pulse, you know, the sweep, so super many. lucky, ultra good time, you know, Chinese website, whatever that is completely different, completely different from someplace like FanDuel, uh, FanDuel, DraftKings, these, those places are United States based. They have done the lobbying. They've done the work. They've, they're regulated. Those are going to be exactly the same as, yeah. you know, those are real online slots. If you are going to play online, which I don't advise, but if you are going to play online, pick some place that, you know, has a name behind it that is legitimate. MGM, Caesars, FanDuel, DraftKings, someplace like that. If it is some off the wall random thing, and I've seen some of these social casinos, like, you know, for example, a lot of these social casinos out there, you know, they can't have games like the enforcer. So they'll have something like, you know, super ultra, you know, cowboy, cowboy wild or something. Yeah. They're not real. And that's the biggest yeah. problem is they're, they're not, they're not real. Um, they can a hundred percent be manipulated, but just know that there is a major difference between a real online regulated casino and one of these social casinos. So just make sure that that is, cause that is a huge distinction. So when we're talking about online slots or online gambling or whatever the case may be, always know that there's two very distinct paths. There's the real ones, the legitimate ones like FanDuel, and then there's everybody else over here. So I just had to put that out there because I know a lot, somebody had mentioned uh, is is FanDuel regulated and absolutely yep. Yep. FanDuel they're, is they're publicly traded. Regulated. They're a publicly traded company. That means there are yeah. socks on it, um, KPM, everybody. They, they are regulated just like any other publicly traded company. Yeah, it's, I, I think the biggest problem and I, I hate how it's taken over YouTube slot influencers right now. It's a, it's, I mean, I don't fault them. You know, everybody's trying to make a living and it's right. tough sometimes, especially when YouTube ad revenues down and all that stuff. But I, I just, I cannot get behind it. I know Dave and I will never get behind it. I know Brantley's the mm -hmm. same. We'll never get behind those things because I, I feel so strongly that you should always play at a casino where you have the regulation and you have the compliance and, and path to file a complaint if something you feel is not appropriate. You can't do that with these places. You don't, and there's no insight because there's no regulation and oversight into how their RNG works. Are they preferring other players over another? Are they giving you more wins during certain times of the day? Like all the things that we put the tinfoil hat on and joke about, these are things that could, I'm not saying they do, but they could be going on on some of these social casinos, but we don't know because they're not regulated. We don't know for a fact that there are people watching all that stuff to make sure that that can't go on. That is what licensed casinos go through. And that's why they have licenses because that is like, imagine a casino's license to gaming is the most important piece of paper in that entire facility. Okay, they've got rooms, they've got casino floors, spas, millions restaurants, all of that. Dollars. That piece of paper 
is the most prized possession that these casinos have, and they will do nothing to risk even a, a blemish that could potentially lose that piece of paper for them. That's how serious the regulation is because as soon, and a lot, and this goes into the whole story where people say, yeah, but my casino, they just pay fines and get away with it. No, they don't. No, okay. they don't. Maybe one fine, but after that, their license is revoked or even suspended. You're like, yeah, but it's just for a day and then they're back up in operation. That's Wait till the news cycle gets a hold of that. Would you want to yeah, play at a yeah. casino where the news says they just got fined for monkeying with the machines? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> they're done. They're done. They're finished as a casino if that ever happens. And so because of that, that is the most important thing that you guys got to look out for when you're playing these casinos is does it have the protection and is there compliance and oversight? And that's what we talk repeatedly about on this channel is you got to have that. You just have to have it. Otherwise, I would never feel comfortable. And on that topic, and I'm not trying to turn this into a rant, but somebody did mention it in the comments, and that is illegal game rooms too. These are everywhere in Texas, everywhere oh in my Florida. God, Florida's, bad. Florida's finally starting to crack down on this stuff, which I'm I'm glad to see that. I love these news articles coming out. Um, th they are not real casinos. You may see Dragon Cash in there. You may see Lightning Link in there. Those are not the same games. They are not aristocrat games. They are different games that look like it. And when I say that, that means they are not regulated, that they could. And I know they do because I've been contacted by those people to buy machines from me. <laughs> They're like, can you set these at 50% or lower? Are you nuts? No. <laughs> You're going to put these things in at 50%? Uh, I mean, it, it's it's bad. It's bad. I don't you even have always... the chips to do that. I know. <laughs> it's not even possible. And that's what I told them. It's like, so they go and buy the, the knockoffs because yeah. those knockoffs – or literally just running a Dell computer that are sitting under the cabinet and they can do whatever they want with it, whatever payback. Just an emulator. So dangerous, guys. So dangerous. And so please, for the love of God, if you're going to gamble, do your research. Make sure it's a licensed casino, that there's regulation in place. Um, we do not want to see you lose money. It's already bad enough, right? It's already bad enough mm -hmm. when you go into a casino and the, the odds are stacked against you. That's just the way it is. Sometimes you win. Most of the time you're not going to. But if you're going to do it, go into a place that is regulated, has oversight, so that you have the best chance. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just going to get, you know, raped over the coals with your money, and exactly. that's not good. That's not good. So, okay, I'm I'm done with my rant, but I, I think it's an and important message, super important. And it I'll let our topic. Thank you, Robin, for gifting Thank five you, Robin. 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 membership. Appreciate you, get, sure. Robin. You're so sweet. Thank she you. She just got her bag too. I know that for sure. No, finally. <laughs> the one she won in February. <laughs> what were you saying, Brantley? Oh, no, I was just thinking Robin. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I th thought you said he had an article or something. Um, all right. So anyway, there's our soap soapbox uh, for this episode. <laughs> I really do appreciate you guys. Uh, we are going to wrap it up here. We're about an hour and a half in, and we really do appreciate you. 365 of you in right now, so really do appreciate awesome. you guys coming. And uh, as always, we do this every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And uh, we are also uh, going to be on the Cowboy Slots uh, channel soon. I think, Brantley, are yes. you going to start your lives this, up? Yes, this Sunday we will be starting okay. the live back on uh, nice. on the Cowboy Slot channel. So be sure to join us on uh, on Sunday, 7 okay. p.m. Central. Well, I should be there. And maybe, Dave, if you can make it, that'd, that'd be awesome, too. Fingers crossed. It's <laughs> Easter, so... <laughs> Fair enough. So we I'm sure all of you guys are uh, subscribed yeah. to Cowboy Slots already, but if not, make sure you head on over there and uh, catch us on Sunday's show and get in there early so you can start asking these questions because it's hard yep. to get to. We have 18 that we started we didn't even get to, yep. so but we try to keep the show moving. So really do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. And as always, gamble smart. Thank you, everyone. Gamble Somebody safe. Gamble Thank safe. you, Bradley. <laughs> Dave yourself. That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good it. night. Oh, and maybe we'll I'm going to delay. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs>